Hey everyone, I'm Sergey Gusev. Welcome back to this channel. Today I'm going to show and explain how to paint a very detailed portrait in oils on paper. Especially for you, I made a full version of this tutorial. It's more than five and a half hours long and a short video, which is one hour 30 minutes long. Both are available to download from my webpage. Just follow the links in the description. Thumbs up if you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Instagram and Facebook. And if you're ready, let's get started! Okay, so today I'm going to work on paper as a surface using graphite pencil. So I start from a very quick sketch to figure out the future composition and proportions as always I do. I'm not going to talk a lot about the other drawing because I usually do it in my tutorials, the full ones you download from my web page and the short ones here on YouTube. So I'm not doing anything special today, just a quick under drawing, trying to set up the right proportions, a good composition. Then I work a little bit on the details, on the eyes, nose and other facial details, not shading a lot, though sometimes I do it just to separate one plane from another one, just to start working and building up the big volume of the head. I chose paper today just because the image is going to be quite detailed and I don't want to deal with the texture of the canvas. So I actually took watercolor paper but I'm using the back side because it does not have any texture at all. And of course, I gave two coats of acrylic primer. I also do not recommend you to use a very soft graphite pencil or, from the other hand, a very hard one. I think the perfect one is something like 2B and in my case it's, I believe, 4B. But obviously don't use anything soft because you can create a lot of mud on the surface. We don't need that. After we're done with the underdrawing, we need to start working on the underpainting. I'm not fixating my underdrawing at all, so I'm going to paint over graphite using a tiny bit of Gelkid Light by Genzel and Raw Umber by Georgian, Daily and Round. So we always start from the darks, we work on the entire portrait, not from the details, but from the big spots, beard, shadows, hair, eyes, shadows in the eye sockets, and so on. When we are done uh, with the shadows, we move on to the lights, because the lights are not white, so we need to darken the lights as well. And remember, we need to care for the right tonal relationship, which means we need to figure out what's lighter, what's darker, and how much. Again, nothing special here. I'm making a very simple, rough underpainting I always make in my portraits on YouTube here and sometimes in my own paintings. So after we're done, we need to let it dry 12 hours or more, but it has to be dry and touch anyway. Then we are going to work with the entire palette, you know, using white, cadmiums, I have not a lot, but I have quite a few colors on my palette. So I'm going to use yellow ochre, lemon yellow, cadmium red dark, ultramarine, raw amber, and titanium white. Again, the paints I usually use. We start working from the darks. I'm not using medium at all. When we block in, we don't have to use medium. The layer has to be thicker than when we made the underpainting. So we can use the paints directly from the tubes. Again, we start from the darks, from the shadows, from the shadows on the face, then from the shadows on the hair. Then we can paint a little bit in the beard maybe. So we need to find all the dark spots because it's going to be much easier for you to start working from the darks. It's more complicated to get the right uh, flesh tones in the lights. So I recommend you to start from the darks. 
if you look at the source pitch, you can see that there is a very strong and very red, very intense reflection in the shadow. But of course, we don't start from that um, bright color. We can start just from the less bright one, maybe burnt umber plus cadmium red. Then we start working on the half tones, and on the after that we can start making that shadow more intense, more saturated, but obviously not right from the beginning. You can use any brushes you personally prefer. Uh, sometimes I use an old bristle one because it's easier to work on the big planes of the head. When I need to do some smaller things, reflections, details, or just to soften something, I usually pick up a synthetic brush. So again, we paint like we always do. But in this case, remember that the lights are warmer than the shadows. We can see a lot of uh, warm light or color, something yellowish in the face, in the light. And the shadows contain lots of cooler shades. Purplish, reddish, and they are cooler than the lights of the face. So we have to always compare what we do with the original picture and also compare the lights and the shadows on uh, the surface in our own paints, and otherwise we can make mistakes. Don't forget that the eyes are not simply white. I always talk about this in my tutorials. The color is a lot more complicated, sort of bluish, sometimes greenish, so we need to look for a nice color. Quickly block in the backgrounds. It will help us to get the right skin tone. In the light and then slowly carefully accurately we can work on the facial details though we don't need to get very detailed right now because I will do it at the very end in the full video which is more than five hours long I have a few parts and so the last part called the details devoted only to the details when I'm working and during a few hours on the hair, on the beard, on the skin textures and so on. We don't start from the details, we will do them at the very end. So here right now we have to care for the big volume, for the facial details, tonal relationship, colors, warm and cool shades and so on. Obviously not for each single hair. So remember that the light is coming from above, making the forehead very light. And we can see also quite a strong highlight on the surface of the nose, on the root of the nose and on the tip of the nose. The lower part of the face is obviously darker. It's not a shadow, just darker half tones. We have to always analyze what we do and compare it. Same with the shadows, we can see dark shadows in the eye sockets just because that area is very close to the light source so it gets a lot of contrast the side surface of the head is more transparent uh, the color is less dark lighter and catching a lot of reflections reflected light so it's quite important for the volume of the head at some point, of course, we have to start working on the hair, on the beard, and make it detailed. And we still have to care for the big volume of the hair. So we don't start from each single hair. We don't need to pick it out. We start from the big shape, big form. We need to find the light in the hair and the shadows on the hair, some very dark shadows and reflections, half tones. so basically it's a big form for us. And only after we find and construct that big shape, we can start working on 
you know, each single detail if we want so. Same with the beard. It's not flat, it has its own shape and form and volume. And we need to work first on the light, on the shadow, compare them with each other, and only after that get into the details. Of course, don't forget that the most important part is the eyes, and therefore we spend, as always, a lot of time working on the eyes. We need to make them, first of all, quite detailed. Remember about the highlights in the eyes. Uh, you can see a lot of highlights. Some of them are on the surface of the cornea, and some of them on the surface of the sclera. They're not that visible, but they exist, and they also exist on the source picture. It's quite important to demonstrate that they are there. Right now I'm working on the beard. You can see that I'm working with a bigger brush. It's a soft synthetic, but it's not a tiny pointed one. So we start from bigger ones and then slowly we take a smaller one with a really pointy tip when we need to draw each single hair. I think it's time to start working on the hair, though at some point I'm sure I will get back to the facial details and maybe work a little bit on the skin texture if I feel so. First I'm working with a bigger brush, with a synthetic, constructing the hair, working on the big volume first, working on that bright, strong, intense reflection, which we can see not only on the surface of the head, but also in the hair. And then when I'm satisfied with the big shape, when I like the silhouette, I take a small brush and carefully start to work on each single hair where I feel I want it. Not everywhere, but maybe in the lights or you know in the central part of the hair so we don't need to work a lot on the details in the shadows or in uh, you know very dark shadows so mostly we care for the details in the lights or half tones and as i mentioned i'm getting back to the eyes cuz i don't want the hair to be the most detailed part i still want the eyes to be the most attractive area of this portrait and at the very end I'm slowly going to work on the very small things very thin hair here I'm using a lot of medium just gamzel just thinner and actually we are almost drawing like we will do it with a graphite pencil we need to create really thin lines and somewhere they need to kind of disappear in the background. I think I'm almost done with this painting and maybe at the very end I want to work a little bit on the eyebrows and then I'm going to stop. It's up to you, you can continue working on this painting and make it even more detailed and even more photorealistic if you feel like that. I think I'm quite satisfied. I like how it turned out. I managed to paint lots of details and so I hope that I would inspire you to follow my tips and instructions and make your own painting. Okay, I'm making the final touch-ups here and there. And thank you for watching, guys. 
thumbs up if you like this tutorial don't forget to subscribe to my channel and of course i remind you that you can download the full video on my web page all the links you will find in the description below again thank you for watching and see you in the next episode